God bless the hungry and the thirsty. May the Spirit of God give you the ears to hear. This is Sister Liberty and I'm here again with another teaching for you. So, I wanted to talk about today Christianity here in the United States. So, this is not anything that is up for debate, but it is something that I believe needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed because we need to respect the fact that Christianity here in America looks completely different than Christianity, you know, in other nations. Now, I've not been in other nations, but I do understand that it is harder, at least I believe that to be true. Um, it is harder to be a Christian here in America than many of these other third world countries or overseas or these other nations. And I say that because here in America, we have so much. You know, it's hard to need God when you have everything. You know, we have all of the resources. We have financial resources. We have technology. We have so much that we have advanced in that has caused us to steer so far away from God. So being a Christian here in America isn't impossible, but it is one of those things that I would consider to be very rare. And again, everybody considers themselves to be a form of Christian here, whether that's a Roman Catholic, whether that's Seventh-day Adventist, whether that's Jehovah Witness, whether that's Mormon, whether that's Baptist or Pentecostal or um, Amy Epithelic um, kind of church, all of that can still be categorized as this individual being Christian. Oh no, okay, so you're saying that you're Christian, but when you look at Christianity and many of these other nations, if you've ever come across a video of someone being persecuted or You've just met someone who lives, let's say, in the Middle East or in Africa. And, you know, they may come on. They may follow you. You all may be friends on Facebook. And you watch their life. You watch how they may preach. You watch how there's a lot of poverty where they, where they're, where they live. There's a lot of disease. There's a lot of sickness. Their world just pretty much looks completely different than our world here in America. And so... When I say that Christianity looks a lot different in America versus over there, in these nations, when someone is a Christian, they're that. They're that. They're not Muslim and Christian. They're not, you know, this religion and Christian. So other people are able to know that, okay, so this person does not practice the, the Hindu religion because the Hindus, they, they dress like this or, the Buddhists, they dress like this. Or the Muslim, they dress, they dress like this. They're going to dress a distinctive way. So the Christians in these other nations are very distinctive. They're very distinctive. It's very easy to know that, oh, okay, so this person doesn't practice the, the general religion of this culture or of this nation. They're Christian. But in America, it's so hard to know who really is a Christian because everybody is Christian. The celebrities are Christian. Those that are in politics, those that are running for president and are, you know, senators of of the house or what, what I forget the name. I don't even know. But, you know, those that are in the politic world, they're Christians. Those that are motivational speakers, you know, like Al Sharpton, they're Christian. Martin Luther King was said to have been a Christian. You know, people who are Freemasons are said to be Christians and so we have a lot of things mixed up here in our nation as far as what a Christian is supposed to look like. But that's so hard to really understand when you live in a place that's very rich and very wealthy. So Jesus says that it is hard for or harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom that it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle. It's so hard to really go after God and I, I believe that's one of the reasons why the standards for Christianity here in America is so low because we have everything versus these other nations they don't have what we have they don't have clean drinking water and I'm not saying that some parts 
in these other nations don't have the best of the best. You know, like I know Dubai has some things. We're, we're, we're not talking about that. For the most part, most of these third world nations that you know, they're very poor nations. That's why a lot of the people are trying to escape. So let's not act like we don't know that things are happening. That's why you have all of these, these, um, I can't even think of the name, but you know, the people who are trying to escape because maybe there's a lot of famine, maybe there's a lot of violence, maybe the government isn't as strong, it's not a stable one. And so refugees, I think that's what they call them, they're trying to escape, they're trying to get away, they're trying to make their way to a better place, the land of the free or you know, another nation where they know that the violence isn't so bad, the death isn't so bad, the rape isn't so bad, the conditions isn't so bad, the resources are a lot better because in their nation they don't have very much. But most of them that are professed believers in these third world nations, they know how to rely on God. They know what it's like to really depend on God because they don't know where the next meal is coming from. They don't know whether or not they're going to be able to get what they need for their kids or they're going to get that insurance. Matter of fact, most of these nations don't even they don't even have insurance. They don't have Medicaid. They don't have what we have. It's harder to want God and need God. And, and I want to be careful but specific when I say we need God because I can feel as though I don't need God. We need to know that we need God as a people outside of God we are a reckless people so in needing God meaning I need a savior I need a redeemer I need someone to place my life on the right path although I have resources having resources doesn't mean a thing because again I have everything that I need. So why do I need God? Needing God, wanting God is for poor people. People who don't have anything. People who are in need. People who need help. People who have been through a lot. They need God. But it's so hard to understand that when you have everything. When I have Medicaid, why do I need God? When I have dental insurance, why do I need God? When I have government assistance, you know, why do I need God? Why do I need to seek God? Why do I need to ask for God? Why do I need to live for God here in a Christian nation, you know, or that was supposed to be a Christian nation? We live in a nation full of pride, full of greed, full of bitterness, full of entitlement. And that's why we don't know how to seek God the way that we should. That's why we don't know how to even ask God for simple things because everything has been given to us everything has been given to us or we we know how to access things easily we know how to get things easily so even when it comes to learning how to really be a real christian here because you got real christians that are actually here in america that are actually striving that are actually trying to break beyond the conditions of their world you know america is if you grew up in America, this is considered your world. This is all that you know. You didn't come from another nation. So most of us are striving and are pressing beyond our world, the conditions of our world, what we were taught, what we've learned, you know, mindsets that we've taken on, perspective that we've taken on. Those things have to be undone. Those things have to be purged. Those things have to be cut away. So you have those that are really striving and that are really seeking after God's heart. But then you have the fake Christian, the mundane Christian, the lukewarm Christian, the worldly Christians. You know, they do everything else that the world does. And it really does take someone who is willing to give up all. You don't understand how difficult that can be. That takes a person who really is after God's heart to be in a nation full of many, many things. Again, there's so First of all, there's there's already so much to do here in America. So not only do we have the resources, but we also have the entertainment where there's so much I can get in, into. I can start my own business. I can, you know, build a company and I can start my own hairline. I can start my own makeup line. I can start my own clothing line. I can have the American dream. I can make things happen. I can reach to the sky. I, I, can, I can do things here because... Of the resources 
You know, I can go to this party. I can go to the movies. I can go to the club. I can buy me a new car. You know, there was a point in time where it wasn't as easy to just get a car off the lot. You know, I remember growing up and taking the bus or taking a cab was was normal for me. It was normal for me. But, you know, we are living in a time where they're making things so easy to get, so easy to obtain. You don't realize that your world here in America is conditioning you, is spoiling you. We don't realize that we are spoiled here in America. We are. You may not never say that, but we are spoiled. And when those that are not in this country, they see us, you know, they may see us on TV or they may see us on social media and they see our lives compared to their life where they don't have much. They don't have as much clothing. They don't have, you know, nice structured homes and nice paved smooth roads. They don't have that. And so when they see us, they see a people who spoil and lazy. Hey, no, you get to go and get your eggs from the grocery store. You get to go and get your produce from the grocery store. And it's going to be there. Unless there's scarcity or a government shutdown. What you need is going to be available. It's going to be right there. And so why do you need God? That's why it's so hard to be faithful in such a rich nation. In such a prideful nation. Our nation is very prideful. And that's one of the things God hates is a proud look. A proud look. Feeling as though we are the best. Feeling as though we've reached a great place in history and on the planet. God hates that. God hates that. And he also hates what's happening in the churches. We don't have a distinction because people are not drawing the line. People are not drawing the line. There's a lot of different things that are happening in the churches that should not be happening. The believer, the Christian, is supposed to be a standard of God in the earth. The believer is supposed to be an example. They're supposed to represent God. They're supposed to be the image of God in the earth. In the earth. So it's our job to be that example. It's our job to set the standard and live out what the standard should be. The standard should be to be set apart. The word of God says to Come out from among them and be separate. Touch not that accursed thing. Don't don't touch what's unholy. Don't touch what's unclean. Leave it alone. Leave the world where it's at. That's why John can say to be in the world but not of the world. If the churches could really live up to this. If they were really trying to live like Christ. Then the house of God would look completely different. And maybe there would be more revival here in America. Maybe people would be delivered from their curses. Maybe they would, there would be more miraculous healing, more miraculous testimony. Maybe we could actually experience more of the supernatural. We hear about it, we read about it, but we don't experience it at the level that we should because of our rich nature, our sport nature, our pride, our entitlement, and, and what we have, we, we have so much and so you don't realize with, with having everything that we need that's so accessible, that's so easy to get and easy to get to you. You know, you could just get it shipped to you. You can get the delivery, the groceries delivered to you. So in having so much, it's hard to humble ourselves and to seek God. Because why am I seeking God? Why am I asking God? Why am I knocking? Why am I pursuing after God when I have everything? Why? Why would I ask God for food when I already have food? Why would I ask God for healing when I have medication? I have Advil. I have Tylenol. I have Aleve. I have, you know, Excedrin. I, I, I have these things. I have stress relieving gummies or stress relieving Pills or CBD pills, if that's how you pronounce it. Marijuana pills, marijuana gummy, depression pills, insomnia pills, anxiety pills, discouragement pills. Why do I need to seek God? Why do I need to ask God to heal this headache when I have Tylenol? Why do I need to seek God who's supposed to be our physician when I have doctors? 
And I need their report. I need their help. I'm not saying that doctors are bad. But what I am trying to get you to consider is do you trust more in the doctors than God? Because that's your first move. You don't you don't seek God. You don't ask God as to why you're going through what you're going through in the first place. You go to the doctors. And that's, that's another problem that we have here in America is that we do things. We make bad decisions. And instead of us addressing the reason as to why we're going through what we're going through, why we are experiencing pain, why we are experiencing affliction, we know how to go and get the resource. We know how to go and get the medication, how to go and see the dentist, how to go and get what we need to fix the pain temporarily instead of you acknowledging the fact that maybe you have a potty mouth. Maybe you curse like a sailor as to why you're having tooth pain, as to why your teeth are causing you pain. Instead, you go to the dentist to get them to remove the tooth or you go to the dentist and get a feeling. Why? Because you just want a quick fix because you you have that available to you. You have that resource to be able to go and do that. And what that's causing us here as Americans is to be lazy and it's teaching us to learn how to do bad things and get a quick fix. You know, if I make a uh-oh, there's clinics for that. If we just so happen to make things happen in a way that we were not planning for it to happen, we can go and get a plan B. Or, you know, we can go to the unplanned place, the unplanned clinic. Because your world that you're living is is your world that you're living in is conditioning you to hate God. Let me just put that out there for a moment. You already hate God in your soul. So your world is making that a lot more easier for you by giving you things, by making things like unplanned clinics available, plan B's available, dentist places available where you where you can go in, fix the pain in your too quick, where you can go and get rid of the problem in your stomach, the seat in your stomach. You can go and get rid of that real quick. Although you were doing bad things, although you were saying bad things, although you were doing bad things with your eye, now you know the doctor told you you got this disease in your eye and you want the doctor, doc, whatever you got to do, whatever medication you got to give me, give it to me. So why do you need God? Why should you be one who looks at your life? Why should you be one who considers whether or not you are a good or a bad person when you have everything? When you have entertainment, you have entertainers, you, you have, you know, different TV shows, you have the news and your news people, you know, they want to keep you in a place of bondage. They want you to know that, hey, this is the world. People do bad things. And, you know, sometimes things happen, but it's okay because nobody's perfect. Your world here in America is making you rich. Your world here in America is making you lazy. It's positioning you to hate God and to not need God. That's why Christianity here in America is so watered down. It's so watered down. You don't know who's a real Christian and who's not because everybody's a Christian. That person who smokes, that person who drinks, that person who's on the block panhandling, they're Christian too. That celebrity, celebrity, they're Christian too. That politic, they're Christian too. So there's no distinction. There's no separation. There's no standard. The standard in the house of God has been brought down so low that anybody can come in and feel comfortable enough to remain the way that they are. There's supposed to be a distinction. So why is it so hard to be a Christian here in America. Why? Why is it almost impossible to lay down your life for real? That that takes a person who really is after the heart of God. They they want God's heart and they're they're willing to let all of these things go. You have to understand, you know, if people from other nations who may be Christians, if they were to come to America, they would stop being Christians. But those of us that are trying to lay that all down, what we have, our resources, our access to things, the Medicaid, the governmental assistance, the entertainment, we're willing to lay that down here in America. That's hard. Do you realize most people are not doing that? Most people are not doing that. They're not trying to do that. They want to hold on to the world. They want to hold on to their idols. But there are those who are really seeking and striving to please God here in America. And that's not easy. That takes someone who is violent with themselves. That takes someone who has to suppress their emotions. That takes someone who has to put their flesh up under subjection in order to be a real Christian here in America, in order to be 
who God is calling them to be. Hey, you got to lay all this down. Wait a minute. That's not easy. That's why the young rich ruler could walk away because he felt as though Jesus was asking a hard thing of him. Wait a minute. My resources, they make me. My riches, they make me. Do your riches here in America, do they make you? Do they make you the fact that you have Medicaid, the fact that you have Tylenol, the fact that you have a leave, the fact that you can go to the dentist, the fact that you can go in, you know, you can tame the STD, although you got it from sinning, you can tame the STD. Do these things make you? Do they make you? Do they make you who you are? The fact that you can go and get a new car off the lot, does that make you good? Does that make you feel important? Does that make you feel affirmed? Does that make you feel rich? The fact that you can... You know, you don't even have to be among the upper class, but you can look like the upper class. You can go and purchase a Louis Vuitton. You can get a Michael Kors. You can get a coach bag and you can look the part. You can, you can look like you're so rich and so wealthy. Your world here in America is trying to condition you to hate God, to hate God. That's why they're giving you more things. Why do you think they're advancing the technology? They want you to feel like you're in control. Huh. You don't have to go to the grocery store anymore. You can just get the groceries delivered. They want you to know, hey, you are in control. You make the decision. You have freedom of speech. You say what you feel on social media and no one can stop you. You are in control. And so the house of God is messed up because we've not made the distinction. We've not set the standard. We've not lived it out enough. I'm not saying that they there may not have been faithful men and women of God here in America before us. But when you look out at the churches, the churches are messed up. The churches, they look like the world. The only difference is they're in a building with a cross on it. That's the only difference. But the house of God, there's no standard. No one is trying or striving to let go of the idols. No one is trying to lay down their lives. You have few but even that's a daily battle because everything around you is pulling on you. Yeah, the entertainment is calling you. That new exercise equipment is calling you. More distractions. They're trying to keep you distracted so that they detract from you your appetite for God. Your zeal for God. Your your hunger for, for truth. Your thirst for truth and for righteousness. It's pulling at you. Hey, why don't you try this new laptop? You know it's portable. You don't even need to keep it charged. Or you don't even need to have it plugged in. You can just take it with you and it stay charged all day. Hey, check out this new water bottle. It does this. Check out these new shoes. Check out this new game chair. Check out this new game. Yeah, everything is pulling on you. Yeah. Come watch this new series on Netflix. Come watch this new Pure Flex movie. Yeah, come buy this new food. Come to this zoo. Come to this aquarium. Come to this game. Everything is pulling on you. You have so much. You have enough things in your world here in America to keep you busy for 24 hours. For 24 hours. Yeah, there's so much. How do you think that affects the human mind? How do you think that affects the human heart? That's doing things to you. Because everything that you see physically is a manifestation of, of, of what you can't see spiritually. So... Things that you may entertain, things that you may indulge in, things that you may do, that's affecting your mind. That's going to affect the way that you think because it's designed to. It's designed to. And you wonder why a lot of the young people, they don't want to go to church. They don't have an appetite for God because they have the, the artists, the, the hip hop artists. They have the, the young female rappers. You know, the school system is jacked up. They're teaching all kinds of things. They're teaching other religions. They don't want you to practice your Christianity. But they're teaching indirectly other religions and other practices and homosexuality and gender change. You don't know that the devil has an agenda here in America. If, if you don't get right with God, if you don't pursue God in a way that says, God, I need you, God, I want you more than anything here in America. If you don't get to that place, then you will get caught up in the agenda of Satan. Even if you do go to church. If your church is not preparing itself, because the house of God should be preparing itself for the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says that he's coming back for his bride, who's spotless and who's blameless. 
How does a church get ready? How does a church remain clean and holy and pure? How does a church remain without spots and without blemish? That takes the individuals living a life of holiness apart from the gathering. That takes an individual willing to lay down their life. That takes an individual apart from the corporate gathering being one way, striving to, to overcome. Letting go of the idols of America. You got to let go of the idols of culture, your ethnic background. You got to let go of the idol of money because we have so much financially. We have all of these financial institutes. And if you don't, if you can't get an account at a bank, you have all of these other institutes that'll give you cash, that'll give you a loan. So you know what? It's hard to be poor here in a rich nation. It's hard to want God here in a rich nation. It's hard to understand your need for God here in a rich nation because you have everything that you need. Yeah, the guy with the, the one limb who's in a wheelchair, he has Medicaid. So he's feeling great. He's feeling great. He doesn't feel as though he's in desperate need to seek God for healing. He doesn't feel the unction to be strengthened in faith because he knows that he can just walk into this clinic and they'll give him what he needs. They'll give him his medication his medication for the month. This woman who smokes, you know, she doesn't need God because although she has lung cancer, although she's had multiple surgeries, she knows that you no, know, the doctors are available for me. This medication is available for me to live. For me to live off of the conditions based on the bad decisions that I've made. And so the believer here in America has to be a standard. There are real Christians here in America. And because this nation, at least this generation, has not seen such a great standard, then they look at it as foreign and as strange. They look at the works of an individual or the individual wolves as displaying cult-like behavior. Because I don't know what it looks like to actually strive to be a Christian for real. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm a Christian and I go to the club. I'm a Christian and I still smoke. You know, I have friend, friends that are professed believers and they curse like I curse. They gossip like I gossip. We all watch the same shows. We all like the same things. Or maybe you may not necessarily consider yourself to be a Christian. But maybe you have a family member because I... I come across that a lot where that person may not identify themselves as a Christian. You know, maybe they may not be into it as much, but they have a family member or they have a friend who they know is a pastor or is a minister or has a church. And so they may use that as their example. No, because I have a friend who has a church and we're the fact that we're even friends, you know, I'm in the world and we're friends. That's already a problem. But you have people like that. You have Things like this happening all the time where people know they know people or they're related to people who are confessed, professed believers, confessed believers, and they're just as worldly. There's no standard. There's no distinction. There is no urgency to really get an alignment and to get in order with who God is calling for us to be in the earth. There's a work that has to be done in a certain time frame. And God is promising to get that work done through his sons in the earth. He has real sons here in the earth. And he has real sons here in America. So when they strive, when they plow through, when they are willing to cut off the idols and really lay down their lives. Another idol that I didn't mention is family. You know, another idol is education. You have to... You got to get to a place where you know that God is more important than these things. That's so hard as an American to let go of because you've been taught and conditioned that this is everything. Family is everything. Blood is sticking in water. Education is everything. You, you need that to survive in the world. You need that to be substantial. You need that to be stable. You need that. You need money to be able to get what you need and what you want. And people have become so afraid to live without these things. That they're doing whatever to keep these things. If you're going to do whatever to keep these things. Then what you're saying is. God these things matter more to me than you. God I need these things more than I need you. The real believer. Position himself herself. To 
lay these idols down because there has to be room for one on the throne of your heart. You cannot have God and mammon. You got to choose. You cannot be on the fence. You cannot be lukewarm. Either you want God or you want America. That's why it's so hard to be a Christian here in America. It's so hard. You don't even know what a real Christian in your nation looks like because you've seen so many fail. You've seen so many play church, be lukewarm, be worldly, be carnal, be vain. So you don't know what that looks like. And so when you see real believers that are striving every day, that are laying down their lives, that are pressing beyond them, they're cutting off the idols, they're cutting off the cultures. When you see that, you call it cult-like behavior because to you that's not normal because you you have a unnes Christian or you have a brother that's a minister and to you that's your standard right there. As far as you're concerned, Christians don't stop talking to certain people. Christians they do get into politics. Christians they they do go as far as you're concerned because your standard is your brother who's a minister but who's also homosexual. That's your standard. Of Christianity, so you don't know what here in America you don't know what a real Christian is supposed to look like because you've not seen it. Yeah, because there are many who have gone before you who have failed. They failed at being a Christian. They failed at being the standard. They failed at being Jesus in the earth. So you don't know what it's supposed to look like. But God is raising up a remnant of people who is after His heart. Who's going to set the stage. Who's going to set the standard. Who's going to take territory. Who's going to set the authority in the earth. He's raising. He's conditioning them. He's preparing them for the end. He's doing that now. Yeah he's speaking to them. He's giving them things. He's stripping them from the world. He's sanctifying them of all worldliness. Because he promised to always have a remnant. God is faithful. God is faithful. So he's touching the lives and the hearts of people even here in America. Not everyone, but those who are willing and available. Those who are saying, God, I'm willing to leave everything behind. Lord, you want me to cut this off? Although this is hard, this is like a thorn in my side. I'm willing to cut this thing off in order to be who you are calling me to be. Because i got to respect the calling and the anointing on my life. So that others can respect the calling and the anointing on my life. So whatever it is that God is wanting me to give, he, he already has conditioned my heart to be willing to let it go. Because he searches the hearts. He knows. He knows that everybody here in America doesn't really want him. He's not even present in many of these churches. You go to church and it's a graveyard. It's a cemetery. You go to church and people are just playing church. That's exactly what they're doing. They're just playing church. God is not there, but they're there. And they're going to do what's normal. They're going to do what feels good. They're going to do what seems right. But I'm telling you, he's raising up a people after his heart. There are things that are about to take place. And God has to justify his name. He has to show himself great in the earth. Who do you think God is going to do that through? You think God is just going to show up himself and do things? No, God works through men. He works through men. He's choosing to work through men. You need to respect that God raises up men and women of God that are faithful after his heart to do work in the earth. And so when you see them striving, when you see them laying down their lives, when you see them getting beyond them, here in America, that takes a willing mind. You may say, no, that person has been brainwashed. No, that person's mind had to be washed from the worldliness. That person's mind had to be sanctified from the, the satanic agenda that they were once in before they came to Christ. Their minds had to be renewed. As Paul says in Romans 12 verse 2. To not be conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing. Oh no baby that mind, that mind needs to be renewed. It needs, the brain needs to be washed and conditioned. Because the stuff that you've taken in. The stuff that you've watched and you've allowed to minister to you, it has reshaped your mind and your perspective and even your brain cells. So the person, their mind needs to be reconditioned. It needs to be renewed. It needs to be brain. That brain needs to be washed. Of all of that perversion, you don't realize that this, this person spent years in the world. This person spent years selling drugs and doing drugs. This person spent years in fornication. This person spent years as a, as a liar. 
this person spent years as a thief. You don't realize that that person has to be washed of that. You call it brainwashed and that's exactly what it is. That believer who has a heart after God, who God has chosen, that person's mind has to be saturated in the presence of God because of how bad the world is, especially, especially here in America. So when you see the believer living up to the calling of God on their life, when you see the believer striving, when you see the believer cutting off things that you can't cut off, because to you it's impossible to not sin. To you, it's impossible to not be homosexual. To you, it's impossible to not look at that woman or at that man in lust. It's impossible to you. You don't believe it because the things that you watched on TV, the things that you listen to, the music that you listen to, it's conditioning you to walk in unbelief. It's conditioning you to not believe that there is a God anymore. That's why a lot of people don't believe that there is a God anymore. Yeah. Where did they get that from? The world. The world. Technology. The resources. The advancement. Everything is so advanced. Where did they get that from? They got that from somewhere. So when you see the man or the woman of God laying down their lives, telling their souls no, telling the temptations of the world no, telling the sin of the world no, no, I'm not coming, no, I'm not going. When you see them positioning themselves to align with the will of God for their lives, don't call it cultish. Just know that God is raising up a standard in the earth. God is setting up his kingdom in the earth and he's doing it through men, whether you like it or not. He's doing it. He's going to do it. He's promising to do it and he's doing it. God is doing it. He's doing it in the hearts of men. Not everyone, but there's a few that he has here that are willing to go all the way. Lord, I know I have all these resources. I know I have control at the palm of my hand. I know that there's entertainment on my right and on my left. But I'm willing to leave this all behind to pursue after you. Most people can't understand it. They can't fathom that. They have no choice but to say that you're in a cult. Because to them, that's not normal. Wait a minute. So you don't masturbate. So you don't go to these kinds of places. So you don't get into politics. So you don't vote. So you don't do these things yet. Because in their warped mind, they can't fathom a person who's so dedicated and so devoted at that level that they're willing to cut off these things. They're willing to run from these things. They're willing to run from the world. They're willing to run from the temptations. They can't fathom that because they don't have a stand where they are. But I go to church too. And my pastor doesn't preach these things. If your pastor, let me, let me say this. If your pastor is not preaching this, that's a problem. If he's not preaching everything, that's a problem. If y'all only stay in one book throughout the whole year, that's a problem. If y'all don't touch any other book, that's a problem. The word of God is supposed to be drink and meat. All of it is good. If he's not preaching all of it, if he's watering it down, if he's throwing some sugar on it, if he's what they call is sugar coating it, that's a problem. If you are not growing as a Christian, if you say, I go to church, but yet you still curse, you get tattoos, you dress like the world, you talk like the world, that's a problem. You are supposed to be growing as a Christian. You are supposed to be learning how to be more Christ-like. You are supposed to be learning how to be more like God and less like the world. You may say, but God is still working on me. If it's been years and you, you're saying that God is still working on you, that's a problem. Because the power of God is strong and great. The power of God is mighty. There's nothing that God cannot do. So you're the problem. God is, God is never the problem. Meaning nothing is ever messed up on his end. So if I'm not growing as a Christian, if I am not becoming more, more godly and less worldly, that's a problem. That's a problem. If I am not understanding that everything in the Bible is for me and it's good, that's a problem. If you go to church and you say, no, my pastor does not read those things because that might be offensive, that's a problem. Listen, the word of God is going to offend in itself. But if you all don't believe the whole Bible, that's a problem. If you're not reading all of it, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's why the standards in the churches are so low. We are supposed to be called to a place of righteousness and holiness. What do you think it takes to be holy? The word of God says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is holy. God is That means God is pure. God is clean. In order for me to be where God is, I have to be like God. 
And to be like God, I have to let go of the world. I have to let it go. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, as hard as it is to be an American, I got to let that go. As hard as it is to be from this culture ethnically, from this place ethnically, I got to let that go because that can no longer be me. That can no longer be associated with me. There has to be a distinction between who they are and who you are because the church is its own nation. So there needs to be a distinction. So that means you have to strive to live up to the standard that God is calling you to. And that, that doesn't mean that it's hard because Jesus says that with God, this is all possible. I know it seems hard in your kind of mind to live this way because you have everything. You don't understand that the, the enemy, the devil, he's trying to take you away from God. He's trying to give you more distractions. Play more games. Play Candy Crush. Play Cooking Mania. Play Solitary Cards. Play this game on Facebook. Mess around a little bit with AI. And see how you would look if you were 70. See how you would look if you were white. See how you would look if you were Asian. He's giving you things so that he can take your focus from God. So that he can steal whatever little fire you did have. Whatever little zeal you did have for God. He wants to steal that through social media. He wants to steal that through this new sitcom. He wants to steal that through this new series on Netflix. He wants to steal that through love and hip hop. He wants to steal that through Atlanta Housewives. He wants to steal that through this new artist that's speaking to you. That's speaking into your soul. He wants to steal whatever, whatever little appetite you got for God. Whatever little passion, hunger you got from God. He wants to steal that. Don't read the Bible. Read this book that tells you how to become a millionaire in five years. Don't read the Bible. Read this book that tells you how to get a man and how to keep a man. Don't read the Bible. Read this book on relationships. Don't read the Bible. Read this book on witchcraft and enchantment. Control your world, baby. Get you some crystals. Get you some candles. Get you some sage sticks so you can burn sage. I'm telling you. The devil who has an agenda, who's running your world, especially here in America where we have all of these resources, is trying to take you from God. He wants to keep you from God so that you never open the Bible. He wants to keep you from God so that you never go to church. He wants to keep you from God so that you never hear that minister right there who the Spirit of God is on. Yeah, don't listen to what they're saying. They're in the cult anyways. Don't watch them. Yeah, he's trying to keep you in bondage. He wants you to be confused as far as what's of God and what's not of God. That's why most people don't have the sermon. They don't know who's of God and who's not because they go to church too. Or they know someone who go to church. So as far as they're concerned, these people who are trying to live right there in the cult. Because we don't know what real Christianity looks like here in America because we have so much. We have so much. Who goes to church anyways in 2024? Who reads their Bible anyways? There's so many other books. There's the Quran. There's this book. There's that book about magic. There's that book about Eli. Who needs Christianity? That's the devil trying to steal your attention. Trying to steal your appetite. He's trying to condition you to believe another God. He's trying to prepare you for the Antichrist. Yeah. You got all these people getting into the AI thing. They think that it's cool. They think that it's fascinating. You got people with robots in their house. Have a whole smart house. Smart TV, smart refrigerator, smart AC panel, smart garage, smart ring doorbell, smart radio, smart vacuum, robot vacuum. What do you think is happening? What do you think is happening? You don't even know that by 2025, every car would be electrical. There's not going to be any more gas cars being produced. What do you think is happening to your world? Are you, are you that blind? Has your world conditioned you to be that blind and you don't see the agenda of the enemy? You don't see the devil at work in your world? You don't see how he's coming after the youth? You don't see how he's messing with their minds and how more of the kids' TV shows has magic in it? Are you that blind? You don't see what's happening? Why does all of the children's TV shows have magic or enchantment or, you know, a wizard or a witch or a fairy? You don't see what's happening? Why are all the video games becoming more corrupt and more violent? bloodshed and lust and perversion, naked women. These are in the basketball games. These are in the race car games. You don't see what's happening. Are you that blind? You don't see the agenda that the enemy is trying to push on the church, on the youth, on the people. You don't see. 
if you don't get in alignment, if you don't get your house in order, and we're talking about your, your physical house, your body, okay, your household in the church, if you don't get in order, if you don't get in alignment, then you're going to miss God. And you're going to be right in line to get your mark. Most people say, I'll never get the mark. But you are already given into the devices of the enemy now. You watch that show. You watch that movie. You listen to that artist. She does these kinds of things. You don't know that some of these artists that you listen to, they're in cults. They sacrifice babies. They eat babies. But you, you don't know that. You're not trying to hear all that. You don't want to hear that. You don't, you don't want to hear that. You want to hear something else. But that's the reality of what's happening in your world here in America. And you wonder why it's hard to be a Christian for real. Oh no, it's just too hard, man. It's just That's what the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to fail and to sit on that. The word of God says that a just man, he falls and he gets back up. You're supposed to get back up. We don't continue in sin and make excuses for our sin. Paul says, do, do, do we continue in sin that grace may abound? We don't preach just a grace message making people feel comfortable in their sin. You are supposed to be ever growing and changing. You are supposed to be preparing yourself for the return. If you are not being prepared now, then when your nation falls very soon, then you're going to be in for a rude awakening. When more diseases, when more COVID, when more coronaviruses and stuff come out, then you're going to leave the faith. When more things begin and when violence get worse, when darkness gets worse, because let me tell you something. It's increasing. Okay, it's getting worse. Darkness, gross darkness is growing. The word of God says, Jesus says that the heart of man is going to wax cold. People's hearts are going to become colder. People are going to become more reckless. You think people are reckless now. You think the school shootings are bad now. Or whatever, wherever they're shooting at. I don't know, that folks shooting everywhere. <laughs> but you think that that is bad You've not seen nothing yet on American soil. When war, when war breaks out and they invade American soil, that's a whole other story right there. That's a whole other topic for another day that I can't, even get, I can't even get into. But what I'm saying is America is going to be in for a rude awakening. When things begin to break out, things that we've not seen on American soil for many, many years, when it happens, people are going to be shaken from their core. And you better make sure that you, your footing is solidified in God. That's why you can't afford to be playing church. That's why you can't afford to be on the fence. Either you are for God or you're not. Here in America, although it's hard to give up these things, it's not that hard at the same time. It just takes a willing person. It takes someone who's willing to lay it all down. Listen, I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm trying to be with Jesus. And so... Although it's nice, you know, you see your friends and your family, they're going on vac vacation and they're having family reunions. That looks nice, but there's a lot of spiritual other things happening in the family and in the world. There's a lot of things happening, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't have much more time. I don't have a lot of time left. But the point is, is it is hard to be a Christian here in America. So to lay down your life. To give up your idols. You have to remember family is one of the biggest ones. At least for me. It was a idol. An idol. That's hard. God you're asking me to do a big thing. Yeah. But they hate me. They hate me and they despise you. They despise you. That's why they talk about you. Yeah God but I love them. Who do you love more? Because Jesus says those who do the will of my father. Those who do this will. What he says. His commandments. What proceed out of his mouth. He says, those who do the will of my father, the same as my mother and my brother and my sister. So you got to make a decision. What do you want? Do you want the world? Do you want money and family? Is, is that what's more important to you? Because Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You had your family. You couldn't let him go. You had money. You couldn't let it go. You had career and education. You couldn't let it go. And in the end... You die and you lose your soul. And guess what? You can't. You cannot take none of it with you. Every single person that has left this planet, they could not take one family member with them. They could not take one degree with them. They could not take not even a penny with them. So what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Where is your life headed? 
the idols in your heart, you need to make a decision. You got to let go of that. God is, he's raising up a remnant in the earth. And he's going to do what he said in his word. Trust and believe that he's going to do what he promised. He's going to move through his people. He's going to begin to do things that we've not seen. Supernatural things. The unknown, impossible things. The miraculous things. You can't expect to see the hand of God move if you're not in constant communion with God. If you hate God. But the believers, the real believers, the real Christians, the real church, they're going to see God. He's going to begin to do things that this nation has not seen. So get ready, get in alignment, and get in order in Jesus' name. God bless you.